The Old Testament reading for this morning is from Amos chapter 8. Hear this, you who trample on the needy, and bring the poor of the land to an end, saying, When will the new moon be over, that we may sell grain, and the Sabbath, that we may offer wheat for sale, that we may make the ephah small and the shekel great? and deal deceitfully with false balances, that we may buy the poor for silver and the needy for a pair of sandals and sell the shaft of the wheat. The Lord has sworn by the pride of Jacob, surely I will never forget any of their deeds. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from 1 Timothy chapter 2. First of all, then, I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings be made for all people, for kings and all who are in high positions, that we may lead a peaceful and quiet life, godly and dignified in every way. This is good, and it is pleasing in the sight of God our Savior, who desires all people to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God, and there is one mediator between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all, which is the testimony given at the proper time. For this I was appointed a preacher and an apostle. I am telling the truth, I am not lying, a teacher of the Gentiles in faith and truth. I desire then that in every place the men should pray, lifting holy hands without anger or quarreling. Likewise also that women should adorn themselves in respectable apparel, with modesty and self-control, not with braided hair and gold or pearls or costly attire, but with what is proper for women who profess godliness with good works. Let a woman learn quietly with all submissiveness. I do not permit a woman to teach or to exercise authority over a man. Rather, she is to remain quiet. For Adam was formed first, then Eve. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman was deceived and became a transgressor. Yet she will be saved through childbearing, if they continue in faith and love and holiness with self-control. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, God. Please rise. He said, 
a hundred measures of oil. He said to him, Take your bill, and sit down quickly, and write fifty. Then he said to another, And how much do you owe? He said, A hundred measures of wheat. He said to him, Take your bill, and write eighty. The master commended the dishonest manager for his shrewdness. For the sons of this world are more shrewd in dealing with their own generation than the sons of light. And I tell you, make friends for yourselves by means of unrighteous wealth, so that when it fails, they may receive you into the eternal dwellings. One who is faithful in a very little is also faithful in much. And one who is dishonest in a very little is also dishonest in much. If then you have not been faithful in the unrighteous wealth, who will entrust to you the true riches? And if you have not been faithful in that which is another's, who will give you that which is your own? No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. The Pharisees, who were lovers of money, heard all these things, and they ridiculed him. And he said to them, You are those who justify yourselves before men, but God knows your hearts. For what is exalted among men is an abomination in the sight of God. This is the Gospel of the Lord.
God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The basis for our message this morning is primarily from our gospel lesson in Luke chapter 16. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus our Lord. Uh, I was just discussing with Pastor Stecker and Seminary and Garrison that uh, many people have said that this story, this parable found in Luke 16 is one of the more difficult, if not the most difficult parable to interpret. Because as you hear about it, you're going, is Jesus telling us that we can be dishonest and we'll be commended for it? Is that what Jesus is saying? No, but we'll get to that. But what might help us to understand this parable is the parable or the stories right before this in Luke chapter 15. Last week we heard two of them, the parable of the lost sheep and the parable of the lost coin. But the big parable in between these is the parable of the prodigal son. You remember that story? There was a dad who had two sons, and the younger son, well, he wished uh, his dad was dead, so he asked for the inheritance, and his dad gave it to him, and he went away, and he wasted his dad's possessions. And yet, he comes to his senses, and he comes back, and his dad welcomes him with an open arms. And then there was the older son, who was not really pleased with what was going on, and the father and the older son have this conversation, and the dad says, aren't you glad that your younger brother is back? And we're not told what happened. Well, here, Jesus kind of goes along and he's speaking to the disciples. And the story is this. There was a rich man, a, a boss, a lord, a master, who had a, a manager, a steward. And word had traveled and got to the, the boss, the manager, the lord, that this, this steward, this manager, was wasting his master's possessions. So he calls him and he says, what is this that I've heard? Are you doing this? Bring me the books. And so the manager, the steward, leaves and he's thinking to himself. In fact, he says, he talks to himself. He says, well, what am I going to do? I, I'm not strong enough to dig. I'm not going to beg because I'm too, I'm too proud to do that. He says, I know what I'll do. And he gathers together those who owed his master's stuff. And we have one here about someone owing 100 measures of oil. And he says, I want you to break down 50% of what that is. Quickly do it. And the next one comes and comes to you. I owe 100 units of, of wheat. Break down that you only owe 80. I'm sure the list went on and on and on. And Jesus tells us in the story that the, 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 the boss, the, 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 the Lord, commended this dishonest manager, this dishonest steward, for his shrewdness, for being street smart, or realizing what the great joy and mercy and generosity that the boss had. Now the question is, what is Jesus teaching us here? What's the point of this story that he tells us? Well, I think we are often like that, like the dishonest steward. We squander God's possessions, his wealth that he gives to us. Jesus calls it unrighteous man, unrighteous wealth. Those things that are of this world, money, possessions, in of themselves are not bad, they're not sinful, but they don't gain us salvation. God gives them to us. He's more than willing to do that. We pray the Lord, the Lord's Prayer in the fourth petition and give us this, this day our daily bread. And God does that for you and for me. But how often do we squander the unrighteous wealth that God gives to us? Jesus warns us that it can become very easy to be slaves, servants, to that unrighteous manna. He says, you know, between God and this unrighteous manna, you're going to serve one of them. You're either going to love one and hate the other, you're going to be devoted to one, despise the other, and he says, you cannot serve God and money at the same time. And often we fall into that trap. Yes, the devil, the world, and our sinful flesh is always calling out to us. Oh, you got to have more. You can't, can't live without that. Oh, that, this, that, and the other thing. And what I try, find truly amazing is that we get all that stuff, and then where does it end up? Here, this week, at the room it's in. <laughs> to which I go around and going, well, I can't live without that. And what is this? I don't care. 
how often that happens in our lives. But is Jesus really teaching us that we have to be careful with that? Is that the only lesson that Jesus wants us to learn from this? By no means. For in our story, the unrighteous or the dishonest servant, steward, he realized where the true wealth was found, the true riches. And that was in the mercy and the generosity of his boss, of his Lord. He realized as he was walking around that his master, his boss, his Lord was generous and merciful. Because he could have, right then and there, had the conversation, I'm throwing you to prison. I don't even have to look at the books. But he wanted to show mercy. He wanted to be generous to his servant, his steward. Now that does that with you and me as well. Because he is the one who is merciful. He is the one who is generous. Yes, God demands that we make an accounting for all our actions, for all the things that he's given to us. And we, like this dishonest manager, we would walk away and say, oh no, what am I going to do now? But the good news is this. That you can rely on your Lord to be merciful and generous to you. That Jesus, in his love for you and for me, took those sins, those punishments, those guilt, and he put it upon himself on the cross. He paid the price. I find it very interesting in this story that it was the, 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 the boss, the Lord, who absorbed all the loss. He was owed a hundred measures of oil, a hundred measures of wheat, and yet in the end, he's the one that actually has to pay for it. Jesus does that for you and for me. He pays for your sins and mine. And he does it, does it because he loves you. He does it because he is generous, and he is merciful, and it never ends. So the question is, what do we do now? Yes, God is merciful. God is generous. Does that mean we can continue to be dishonest? By no means. We realize that all these gifts, both the unrighteous money, unrighteous wealth, and the righteous wealth, the forgiveness of sins, eternal life, and salvation, the Lord's Supper, baptism, all of these are from God. And we use them appropriately in our lives. Yes. God has given us wealth. All of you. He has blessed our congregation immensely, to which we are very thankful for. But God also wants us to use those things for His good. We get a little glimpse of that in our Old Testament reading where Amos, the Lord speaking through Amos, is bringing indictment upon the people because they were cheating each other. That God says, I have blessed you with this great wealth, not for you to hoard, not for you to just keep for yourself, but that you can share that with others. This story about when's the new moon going to be done, or when's the Sabbath going to be done, there were certain times in the Old Testament where they were not allowed to do commerce. But they were waiting, when do we get to do it? When do we get to do it? A little example is this. Isn't Black Friday supposed to be on Friday, not starting on Thursday night, on Thanksgiving? Just saying that's what they were thinking. They were saying, let's make the, the, the units small, the ephod, but the shekel great. Let's have just on a scale so they would put their thumbs on the scale and say, oh my, that's like 10 pounds. A little bit 10 pounds. Well, that's what the scale says. God wants us to be generous with our unrighteous wealth so that others could hear about the righteous wealth, that God forgives them, that God gives them eternal life, that God gives them salvation. That's what God wants us to be doing. He wants us to be faithful in the gifts that he's given to us. In a little bit, you're going to come up and receive the very body and blood of Christ for the forgiveness of sins and for the strengthening of your faith. Realize that in this wonderful meal is the greatest of all riches that you could ever receive. Christ himself. And as we go forth in our world, realize that the unrighteous man wants to enslave you. The 
you realize you've been set free and that you have the true wealth, the true riches of Christ. Your forgiveness, your eternal life, and your salvation. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please rise. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.